So I just saw Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Let's talk about it. Okay, so in interviews, the director had this to say about the movie. And my pitch for this was to go back to the games and to go dark, scary horror. I wanted to bring in the iconic characters from the games who had been in the movies, but they had always been subservient to Mila's character in the films. It's very much a pure adaptation of the first two games. As a fan of the games, who has always held out hope for a more faithful adaptation of those games, that all sounds fantastic. What else did he have to say? Welcome to Raccoon City is a very faithful adaptation of the Resident Evil games. Alright, so did he accomplish this task? No. This video is pretty much just going to be spoilers from this point on. The movie begins with Chris and Claire Redfield as children. They're orphans living in the Raccoon City Orphanage, which is run by William Birkin? Lisa Trevor also lives in the orphanage. She just wanders around. Cut to present day, which is September 30, 1998. Raccoon City is now a ghost town. Umbrella is closing up shop and moving to a new location, so the town is pretty much abandoned. An on-screen note tells us it's pretty much just Umbrella employees and poor people left in town. As adults, Chris is a by-the-books cop who was raised by William Birkin and thinks of him as a father figure. He thinks Umbrella is totally trustworthy and not up to anything bad at all. Claire is a badass renegade who has been estranged from her brother. She's returned to Raccoon City to uncover the truth about Umbrella because she knows they are up to no good. Wesker is a fun-loving prankster who likes to make jokes about getting laid. Right off the bat, we know he's up to no good because he's got a Palm Pilot with secret instructions on it, which he nervously accepts. Leon Kennedy is a doofus who oversleeps and thinks getting out of bed to go to work is hard, guys. He's been transferred to Raccoon City because he accidentally shot his last partner in the ass. Not making that up. Jill Valentine is a badass whose purpose is to be the Claire when Claire's not around. Chief Irons is a smartass but well-meaning boss who is sometimes a coward and sometimes brave, but I guess a good guy. William Birkin is our main villain. He still has a family. Annette Birkin is not a scientist. She's just a wife who has no idea what her husband is up to. Sherry Birkin exists. Honestly, the truck driver who crashes the tanker truck in front of the RPD has more screen time than Sherry Birkin. So basically, this movie just mashes up elements from Resident Evil 1 and 2. Chris, Jill, Wesker, and a few others go to the Spencer Mansion. Meanwhile, Leon is told to stay at the RPD and sit at the front desk. There is no Marvin, by the way. So Leon is running the front desk of the police station, where he puts on headphones and listens to music while he's on duty because he's a terrible cop and sort of an idiot. His whole personality is teenager whose parents forced him to get a job at McDonald's, but nobody else showed up for their shift, so he's freaking the F out and has no idea what to do. Chief Irons decides to bail and skip town, but Umbrella people are stopping people from leaving town even though the town is about to be evaporated in six hours and Umbrella is evacuating and hardly anyone lives there. So the chief just comes back to the RPD. Claire shows up at the RPD looking for Chris. It wasn't too difficult because there aren't that many zombies roaming the streets of Raccoon City because everybody left town. Basically has to hold Leon's hand for everything because he's incompetent in every possible way. Like Leon gets his gun stolen by Ben the prisoner and then almost gets eaten by a zombie until Claire saves him. So Claire, Leon, and Chief Irons leave the police station and go to the orphanage so they can take a secret entrance to the Spencer Mansion. At the orphanage, Chief Irons is killed by a liquor. And if you thought this was going to be the cool scene where you get to see Claire and Leon fight a liquor, nope. Lisa Trevor shows up and kills the liquor easily. Then Lisa Trevor helps Claire and Leon escape because she is Claire's friend. I'm not making that up. Meanwhile, at the mansion, it's pretty much just the gang fighting a ton of zombies. It's like World War Z in there. So in this movie, we get a mutated dog and mutated crows, but no giant snakes or spiders. Also, no tyrant, no Mr. X, no hunter. Wait, was there a hunter? I don't remember a hunter. The fans are going to be happy with this movie because it's pulling very much from the games. You know, pushing all that aside, I think the biggest problem I have with this movie is that you know, they claim they want it to be its own thing, and for like probably the first half of the movie, I think they're relatively successful. They've got a great horror movie vibe going on here, the story's different, but you know, I'm going along for the ride, I'll see where they're going with this. The problem is that they start taking so much from the games that it just devolves into a bunch of random scenes from the game. They want to be their own thing, but then it's just scene after scene of, uh, ah, remember this scene? Remember this scene? And it doesn't really work in a cohesive way. Every frame has details to the game. It's like, 
I don't know if any of you guys have ever been to Halloween Horror Nights, but when they have a Halloween Horror Nights event, it's the big haunted house thing they do in Universal Studios parks, and they often have these haunted houses that are based off of, like, popular franchises, like, you know, Halloween or Friday the 13th or whatever. And what they do is they take a movie like Halloween, and then there's a series of rooms you walk through, and each one sort of reenacts, like, a different scene from the movie, like... Maybe there'll be a scene, like if you're doing a Halloween house, maybe there's a scene where you're, you know, you're, you're in the room where Annie's dead with the, the, the tombstone there. And in the next scene, you walk through, it's the stairs with Michael Myers at the top or whatever. And it just jumps from scene to scene because it's just kind of showing you little, like little, it's capturing little moments from the movie from room to room. And that's what this movie kind of feels like. It's as if it just jumps from moment to moment in the first two games without really the context for a lot of those scenes. It almost comes off like he watched or played these games on mute because visually, a lot of it looks spot on. But from a character perspective, it's nothing like it. And it's a shame because visually, this movie actually looks pretty amazing. Uh, it's not like the director doesn't know how to direct a movie. It's just the story choices are a bit puzzling to me. and what they decided to keep and what they decided to not keep from the games, it feels like they just did a 180 of what it probably should have been. I guess that's just my opinion. Anyway, that was Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. Let me know down in the comments how you felt about the movie or how you feel about these changes. And until next time, later Danger Seekers.